Today's video is all about encrypting your website with HTTPS and SSL, making it more secure and also more relevant for search engines. HTTPS is basically the more secure version of HTTP, which is the base for the internet. HTTP is a protocol which is used to communicate between the server and the browser and essentially bringing the website into your screen or onto your screen. With HTTPS, it is possible to send data from the server to the client encrypted and also from the client. If you enter some data into some contact form or a login form, then those text elements actually get encrypted and sent to the server. Additionally, it is also a certification mode, which essentially ensures that the data that is coming from the server is actually from the server that it's supposed to come from and there is nobody in between kind of changing the data or listening. Now, HTTPS is kind of a technical area. Many don't know about it, many don't care about it but essentially you have to look into the browser bar and if there's this kind of green lock symbol in the browser bar with secure standing right next to it which is the way chrome decided to show this kind of communication between server and client and the certification status as well if you look for that, you know that you're using the more secure version. I also already talked about HTTPS Everywhere in the video about Chrome extensions, which essentially tries to make every website use HTTPS if the server supports it. Now, using this more secure protocol is actually good for multiple things. One, it looks better for the customer if he cares. The second reason is that it actually secures the communication between client and server. And the third reason is that search engines like Google actually prefer the HTTPS version now. So they kind of force you to use HTTPS if you want to be ranked well, because it's actually one of the reasons to be higher ranked now. Now, the problem over the last couple of years was that HTTPS is something that you need a certificate for. And to use a certificate, you actually need a company that certificates that you are the person who owns the certificate. So you need kind of this base company that gives you the certificate and those companies they in general take money for doing so. Now a couple of years ago there was an organization formed called Let's Encrypt which essentially is exactly that. It is the certificate station where you can get a certificate and they kind of automated the whole process making it free for everybody and uh, the organization is donation based. The only problem that I found with Let's Encrypt is that it actually is not possible to do that in a shared hosting environment on Namecheap. It is possible, but you would have to change the certification every 90 days and that is kind of tedious. That's where automation comes in. But there are different hosts who actually support Let's Encrypt in their main admin interface. So you can simply set it up and it's super great. If you're running your own server, you can also use Let's Encrypt's free certifications and then you just have to set up the cert bot and make it continuously running so it actually updates the certificates every 90 days or so. But since we are using Namecheap as a host here, I'm bound to different options. One of those options I also want to mention is called Cloudflare. That is a service that does much, much more than just HTTPS and SSL, which is essentially a service that you put in front of your website and that makes it perform better because they do some caching around the world. They have security features, they have reliability features, and you get a little bit of more statistics. The Cloudflare service is actually a great service and I use it for many projects and many websites. I think it's powerful and especially since they are offering a free plan as well and then you can upgrade from there. But the free plan is absolutely enough to do the HTTPS and some basic caching. I might do a video about this in the future but for now I will stick to the last of the three options I want to discuss here. And the last option I want to discuss and where I actually want to show you how it works is the HTTPS certificate from Namecheap itself. Now it can be kind of confusing because there are actually different HTTPS certificates you can buy with Namecheap and they range from very cheap around 9 euros or 9 to 10 US dollars up to a couple hundred euros a year. The main differences are that one certificate, for example, the cheapest option, you can only use it for one domain name, which essentially is the www dot and also the nothing in front of your domain and then just universitychooser.com, for example. Additionally, the more expensive certificates also offer, for example, some kinds of insurances. I never worried about these things. I just worry about the HTTPS, especially the encryption and how it affects me in SEO rankings. And for the beginning and for the smaller projects, I would actually go with the cheapest option, just selecting the positive SSL here for eight euros a year. 
Now, one thing I want to say in general about HTTPS and the certification. If you only want to create a little about me page where you have linked to your social media, a little bit about yourself, maybe a couple pictures, and you don't really care about SEO, then it's absolutely not necessary to have HTTPS. Except for the administration interface of WordPress, for example, you are submitting your login information. And if you're not using HTTPS, that login information will be sent over the network without encryption. So if you are in a public like Wi-Fi, for example, in a cafe, this information could be read from someone else. So that kind of makes it less secure. If you're really small, if you don't really care, I would say you don't really need this. If your host actually supports Let's Encrypt, it's absolutely a no-brainer. You kind of like, why wouldn't you take that? It's a free SSL. You have a more secure website. It is better for the ranking and everything. I would definitely choose that. And if you run your own server, or if you want to have the Cloudflare system around, it is also possible to have that. And there I would also say, if you if it's possible for you to set up Cloudflare, then I would definitely say go for it, if you want to use the other services as well. But keep in mind that adding services like Cloudflare in front of your system can potentially slow you down or give you more problems. So if you are, again, running a very small website, just an about me page, I would stay away from that and just keep it bare bones easy, maybe even not use a HTTPS certificate. But in this video, I will show and demonstrate how it works with a Namecheap certificate. I have a link in the description below, which is a link to Namecheap itself. That link is an affiliate link. If you want to support the show, please feel free to click that and then purchase. But if you don't want to do that, please feel free to Google it for yourself and then you don't use my affiliate code. For me, the next step right here is just to confirm the order, which then brings me to the login screen and then I will have to log in. After I did all the billing address and payment processing and which kind of payment I want to choose, I will be brought to this kind of page where I can say download this receipt again for my paperwork and also have the positive SSL and I can just click here for manage. And as you can see here, you have a new page in the product listings, the SSL certificates. And here we have the positive SSL, which is valid for one year, and we can renew it after that. And the SSL certificate actually needs uh, activation. So we click activate. Now this page brings us to the activation process of the positive SSL, which is a process that is a little more technical, but we will get through this. Here you have a link where you can actually learn how to do it and we will do it via the cPanel, which we already have seen in the last video. Here's the tutorial and we will maybe we will come back to this. And then we have the cPanel right here. In the cPanel, there's a section that is for security and there's the SSL and TLS area. And what we have to do here is that we have to request a certificate. So we have the we, so first we have the private key area. So we have to create a private key. And what we have to do here is just generate. And now we already have the private key. Then the next step is that we already return to SSL. So the next step the next step is to return to the SSL thingy. And from there, we have to make a certificate signing request. So we click to the generate certificate signing request. And what we do here is we select the private key we just generated. And then we have to put a domain here. So then we have this certificate signing request. And from there, we can just return to the SSL manager. For the next step, we go back to the signing request page. We have this signing request right here. So we just click edit. And then we have the encoded CSR. And that we will have to copy. And then we enter it right here. Submitting CSR, please wait. It is for universityjuicer.com. And then we submit that request. Now we have a couple of details here, which essentially is showing us how the data is entered. Then we click Next. Then we say we want to verify via HTTP. And we have to fill in an administrator email address. Next. And then when we say Confirm for the primary domain, universitychooser.com. So then it brings us to this page where we have to do the certification process with the HTTP based DCV. So we go to this page where it says go to certification detail page. 
And what we can see here, it is the HTTP mode, and then we can say download file. And then the next step is going back to the cPanel, which offers a file manager. So we open the file manager here. And in the file manager, there's actually a folder called www. And into this folder, we upload the file that we just downloaded. So we, we open the upload manager, and then we can just drag and drop the file here. Now it's complete, so we can go back to the folder, see if it's there. Yep, it's actually there. Then we can come back to this certification page here, and we can make see details on the progress. And on this page, we have the DCV methods in use, HTTP, and we can say edit, and we can say save changes, retry alt DCV. So we try that. Now it's reloading the page and checking for the certification. And here you have DCV changed, has been changed successfully. So shortly after you have put the file on the server, there will actually be a check if the file is there and Komodo will actually send you the certificate via email. We have the certificate right here, but I would also highly recommend to download the file itself just for backup purposes. We can then copy this certificate and then we go back into the cPanel and there we go back to the security area where it says SSL and TLS. And then we go into the certificate area and here we can actually upload the CRT file or we can just put the fr uh, or we can just paste the certificate I just copied here. I will just do the paste, but you may also upload a file that you just downloaded in the zip. So you unpack the zip file and then you can upload the CRT file here. I will just save that. So the certificate for the domain is actually saved. And now I can go back to the return to SSL manager, manage SSL sites, select a domain, universitychooser.com, autofill, and then we will have a certificate. We have the key and we have the CA bundle. Install the certificate. Now it says the certificate is successfully installed for universitychooser.com and the SSL certificate also supports this domain with the www in front. So the next step would be to just check if it actually works. So we go to the universitychooser.com website. Without HTTPS, it actually loads quite fine. And if we put HTTPS in front of it, The website loads just the same and it works perfectly. We now have the secure tag here and the HTTPS in front. So from now on, the data between the server and the browser is actually encrypted. You are more valuable to search engines. The only thing that's left is actually to make this the default setting for the system in WordPress. So we go into the dashboard. Of course, since we changed the system between HTTP and HTTPS, it actually asks us to log in again because this is kind of a new login. And once we have done that, we can go into the settings in the general area and we can put the HTTPS in the WordPress address bar and also in the site address. Now, since we changed something quite significant, it asks us to log in again. Making this change is quite significant. And especially if you make this change to a page that is quite old, it may be problematic because some of the sources are hard linked. So you have a post, for example, where you have pictures in it. So you probably will have links, for example, images that go to the HTTP version of your website. You might want to update those manually or you want to do that automatically. Then after you've done that, it is probably the best idea to check all the pages you have. And I think it's just easier to do it right from the beginning because then you will not have to change it later. And this setup that we have here right now, it actually automatically redirects from the HTTP version to the HTTPS version, which is super helpful. And all this kind of makes your website more secure. It helps you with your login because it's actually more secure if you work in a cafe or in another public Wi-Fi. And search engines value your website a little bit more as well. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have any problems. And also if you want to see a video about the Cloudflare solution or the Let's Encrypt solution with another host. I have many more videos in this kind of video series where it's all about getting you from domain and hosting up to your own website, which is customizable and you can build landing pages and things like that. This is just one small piece in the puzzle, basically. 
If you have more in-depth problems or you want personal help with your website, please email me with the email that is also in the description below and we will find a way to work together. Now, I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and also share it with someone who may need a SSL certificate. And last but not least, please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this almost every day and stay tuned until the next one. I will see you there. Bye.